Hi guys. Um, I sometimes joke about uh, Newton and Einstein and uh, CERN and uh, NASA. Um, but I really respect those people. And uh, But they all have their share of mistakes. And uh, looking at Newton and Einstein, they definitely had their share of mistakes. And um, well, so do I. But let's look at one mistake Newton made. And it's, uh, it's important because it... Uh, it pointed us in, in the wrong direction. It's not a mistake, but it's it's wrong. That's what it is. Let me explain how Newton works. Newton says F equals M times A. And that's not always right. Over here I have a Zeppelin and its real mass is 5,000 kilograms. But the thrusters are off. And so the weight measured on the scale is zero kilograms. Now, if I take that same Zeppelin, point the thrusters downwards and fire them up, your mass is going to be still 5,000 kilograms. Nothing has changed. Mass is the same. Electric motors, no gasoline, right? Electric motors. Mass is the same. Thrusters, 8 times 1250. Weight measured, 10,000 kilograms. And that, of course, you all know this is wrong. You know this happened only weighs 5,000 kilograms, but still the scale says 10,000. And uh, this is good news if you're uh, on a diet, because when you think you weigh 80 kilograms, your actual mass is only 40 kilograms. But your 40 kilograms push down on Earth with a force equal to 80 kilograms. Same thing here. The actual mass of the Zeppelin is 5,000 kilograms, but these 5,000 kilograms push down on Earth with a force of 10,000 kilograms. So, wrong weight again. Next step. Same Zeppelin pushing down on the scales, but now two of the thrusters are in trouble. They overheat it and they only uh, make 1,200 kilograms each instead of 1,250. So now the weight measured it's not 10,000 kilograms, it's 9,900 9, kilograms. So, depending on your thrusters, the weight of your object varies. And, uh, well, Newton didn't take that in account, he didn't. So, now we're going to look at an atom, or a molecule, or mass. We have this scale down Zeppelin, a model Zeppelin, it really, uh, the real mass is 8 kilograms. But it has protons and neutrons and they're all pointing, face all kinds of directions. And uh, so the force downwards is 6 kilograms, although the weight, the real mass is only 8. Um, and this is what happens in general, we weigh, we use a scale to determine weight. Uh, over centrifuge and centrifuge is all, often uh, Calibrate using a scale, so you, you copy that mistake to your to your uh, I call it centrifuge uh, scales. Now the average thrust of a neutron is 2.01 kilograms, and that's just a figure, just an example. 2.01, it's a bit high. A neutron is, is a perfect symmetrical object. A proton is not that symmetrical. A proton has one of the a spinning graton sticking out, making us notice as an electron. So uh, a proton has, has one of them sticking out, it's one object. But therefore it's not that efficient when it comes to pushing out uh, gravitons into outer space. So your average stress of a proton is a bit lower than your average stress of a neutron. There's a very little difference. Neutron 2.01, proton 1.99, just for example, very little difference. But because most mass has about half neutrons, half protons, um, it's of the 50-50, and they're spinning in all kinds of directions, we don't notice those differences. So, according to Newton, F force is n times A. But it's only true in this ideal situation. Now we go to another situation, which is less ideal. Now we have, again, the same mass. Neutrons. Neutrons and protons weigh the same. No, uh, correct. They weigh different, but their mass is the same. Their weight depends on how many 
gratons and how fast they excel them out into outer space. That's their weight. Their mass is what they're made of, what they build of. So the mass, 8 kilograms mass for this toy zeppelin and the downward force on scale is 18 point, uh, 16.08 because it's all made of neutrons. Neutrons have a slightly higher thrust. Now the scale says not 16 but 16.08. And here Newton goes wrong. F does not equal m times a in this situation. It also is true for this picture when all newtons are gone, but all newtons are, have decayed into protons. A, a, a proton is no more than a neutron uh, with one of the electrons sticking out. That's called decay. So now we have all protons, and the protons have this lower thrust. So now you get 15.92. So that's lower than 16. Again, Newton is wrong in this situation. So, what happens here? This is a piece of mass, equal number of protons, equal number of neutrons, but the protons are aligned like this. It's a very nice crystal structure. Protons aligned like this, neutrons aligned like that. And uh, protons, the low thrusters, are now mainly responsible for uh, the dial on the scale. So the force is less than you might expect because the protons are now mainly responsible for the downward force. The real mass, of course, is 4 times 6 is 24 gravitons. This is 6 gravitons, 6 gravitons, 6 gravitons, 6 gravitons. Your real mass is 24 gravitons. Your real mass in Star Wars never changes. It always stays the same. You only count your gravitons, the mass, real mass in star drive never changes. But Newton's mass does change, and that's wrong. So in this case, protons provide a thrust, but they're a bit weak. They're like the uh, overheated engines, they're weak. So they uh, just a little, le little less thrust. And we change the orientation of that object. This thing, the orientation of the protons, it still has two protons to neutron, but now, the neutrons, the more powerful neutrons, provide the thrust. So now, the dial goes up a little. Uh, again, according to star drive, real mass remains 24 gravitons, and again, Newton is wrong with F equals N times A. It does not equal N times A. Newton is wrong. I hope this is clear to you. I don't like to uh, put Newton down, but, you know, we all have a share of mistakes, as I told you before. So that Newton mistakes, and this is a little add-on. Um, this is your spinning proton, your spinning nucleon. And this nucleon is spinning, and when gravitons come in from here, your gravity is zero because these ones are spinning. These gravitons now provide the rotation. They replenish the energy when it's lost. All those nucleons lose energy when accelerating gravitons into outer space, and, that's, and it has to be replenished, and that's what happens when gravitons hit it from the side. In this case, it can exert a gravitational force. It has, it has to do with the orientation of an object, of a, of a nucleon, whether it can exert a gravitational force or not, or how much it can. Uh, your crystal structures do not exert a gravitational force. They are uh, stationary. They do not spin. But the, the, newton, the, the quark spinning those, the quarks, they exert force. And when you have a neutron gridlocked, again, this is, uh, when it's gridlocked, it's the same as these. It cannot turn, and when it cannot turn, it cannot uh, exert a force. And when does this happen? Well, extreme cold, for instance, is one of them. Let me show you. Go back to the first picture of the Zeppelin. And this is your superconduction still has a mass of 500 kilograms, but we weigh, it weighs nothing. You can take it up and hold it up and let go, and it will not fall down to earth because its motors are silenced. And that's exactly the same what happens with uh, superconduction. Thank you.